Hey, what's up? It's Schnell. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. And today, let's talk about Gore Grind because I've been getting hit up a lot about what is Gore Grind, what's Gore Noise, what's Death Grind, etc., etc. So, I had a few people after we posted the last Out of BC Lives practice on Twitch, which is my gore metal band. It's two-thirds of a cursed womb, me on vocals and power electronics, and uh, Pat on drum programming, because when we play live, we have the drum machine coming out of the keyboard amplifier. I think it might be the orange bass cab that comes out of. But we have it all set up. So, like, live, it, like, every, it took a while, even with the Vocal 300, to get the settings, like, to where exactly I wanted them. Because with the Cursed Womb, no pitch shifter. No, no, no. That's all natural vocals. And some of you might be like, what's, what's a pitch shifter? Well, a lot of those gore grind bands you like, they don't really have those types of vocals. Some people, yeah, it's ridiculous what you can do without a pitch shifter. I think it was Sublime Cadaveric Decomposition. I am positive this dude did not have a pitch shifter. And it was like... Because, like, and Pat, if you're watching this, you can back me up. Because I recorded his vocal warm-ups. Because he kept saying the same sentence over and over. But he kept getting deeper and deeper with it. How many... Uh, see, YouTube sucks. My video will get buried if I even say what this dude said for vocal warm-ups. So, seriously, this sounds so lame. I don't even want to say it. Legit, leaving comments helps. I know, but, like, Let's talk about gore and shit. Let's have a nice, civilized conversation in the comment section. Because for one, it helps the channel. Two, I want to know what you folks, like, consider, you know, because... Oh, Alright, so let's start off real fast. The godfathers of gore. Obviously, Carcass. Now, I do not have an LP copy at the moment of Rika Putrefaction, but I personally, I'm a big Symphonies of Sickness fan, and for a long time, honestly, Necroticism was like my go-to, and then I went back to Symphonies, and then I really got into Rika Putrefaction. Like, and then, like, um, when Arsis came out, I was like, whoa, this sounds like heart work carcass, but, like, not really. And then I went back to carcass heart work. I was in, like, a semi-brutal, semi, I hate the word melodic death metal, but, like, it was 2004. Give me a break. There were a few Gothenburg riffs in there and stuff. But honestly, it was more like carcass necroticism more than at the gates. But, like, I remember hearing a celebration of guilt by carcass, I meant by Arsis, and being like, whoa, like, maybe I should go back and listen to heart work. And, uh, I tried re-listening to, like, Swan Song and stuff, and I was just, just terrible. 
Like, there's a, a, a couple tracks. To quote Todd Jones, couple tracks. But, when they reunited, and some of you might be like, reunited? What are you talking about? Yeah, Carcass broke up for a long time, and you had these sh- bands like Black Star come out of it, which you had Jeff Walker's, I think it was called Carcass Country, but like, spelled offensively. Like, it, I think, I'm like positive it said it, it was called Jeff Walker's Carcass Country, and it was like, Rockabilly? I don't remember, but I know it was like a money grab, take it, whatever, I don't care, I I didn't buy it, but I definitely, at the time, Carcass was dead, and like when they did their first U.S. reunion shows in, fuck, was it 2009? Or was it 2013? I don't remember. <clears throat> but it was in Baltimore. I remember that. But. We are blasting, though. Posthumous regurgitation. Exhumation of cadavers for research and consumption. Thank you, Joshy Rotten, for this filthy slab of gore. On Till Faith Records. I love this band. They, their, their new release on Head Split, so good. And they do, like, the carcass clone thing so well. But it's more general surgery pathologist. Like, obviously, early carcass, but it's more so general surgery. And if you've never heard general surgery, necrology, go listen to it, and then go listen to carcass necroticism, and or uh, the Tools of the Trade EP, and then you'll be like, wait, what? Like, what the hell? Like, it's one of those, like, I, I, I'm not gonna, but, like, one of, like, the best Carcass clones, when they first came out, got so much shit for the gimmick, because when people found out the gimmick wasn't real, they got pissed. Excuse me. Got a flip sides. I have Carcass on the turntable, but Eerie, they don't like when you play their tunes, you know? <laughs> Obviously, they don't like it. But, um, this month, Rika Putrefaction is on the patron list, so I, I keeping my fingers crossed, because... Like, there's a lot of picks this month, but, like, I don't know where we even stand with donations right now. I I try not to check, because then I stress, and I I don't want to stress out over nonsense. Alright, so, we'll start real quick by making something that's kind of obvious, but, again, not everyone... This is not a death metal record. Okay? I mean, if you want it to be and consider it death metal, be my guest. But Symphonies of Sickness, this 1989 just legit gem of filth, riffs, awesome vocals, everything. Like, this is gore grind. But, if you want to call it grindcore, death metal, death grind, to me, right now, I'm 39, let's just 
it's all under the grind umbrella, but there is a massive difference between Terrorizer, World Downfall, Early Napalm Death, and um, I just grabbed this for the Lee Doran BBC Peel Sessions from 87 and 88. Don't get me wrong, the Barney Greenway B-Side's great, but the real bangers are on the A-Side here. Like, The Kill, Prison Without Walls, Dead, Deceiver, Lucid Fairy Tale, In Extremist, Blind to the Truth, Negative Approach, Common Enemy, Upstain Direction, that, and Life, and then, uh, you Suffer Part 2, Multinational Corporations, Instinct of Survival, Stigmatized, Parasites, Moral Crusade, Worlds Apart, M.A.D., Divine Death, C.S., Control Walls, Raging in Hell, Conform or Die, and S.O.B. Like, when it comes to straight-up grindcore, yeah, absolutely, I would say... Probably their best material to me. It's just enough. Like now, I love the mentally murdered EP. I love the sophomore full length. I love Scum, but these Peel sessions. I love Lee Doran. Like, don't get me wrong. From enslavement to obliteration is probably. Like, my actual favorite for Napalm Death when it comes to a full-length record. So, there was a time period on Earache where everything had the word grind in it. Even Morbid Angel. Morbid Angel is not a grind band. We all know this. Then you had the Grind Crusher Tour and stuff. The Grind Crusher comp. Very important releases. But what does this have to do with Gore Grind? Well, from the early 90s, when Carcass started, I should say, after Necrology. I meant after Necroticism. But to some people, even after Symphonies of Sickness, Carcass is a straight-up death metal band. Like... So... You had these other bands in, like, Czech Republic, like, Pathologist, for example, take that early Carcass formula and kind of, like, make it their own while still, like, just having this gnarly recording, like, on... Putrefactive and Cadaverous Odes About Necroticism, 1992, originally released in 1992, and it's a 2019 reissue, but like even the artwork and stuff, like, because here's what I love about Pathologist, like, does that cover look kind of familiar? Because it should. Oh, I grabbed the wrong pharmacist record, but luckily, I have the cassette version right here. Although it's different colors, so my point will not really get across. But, even the titles here, like, hold on, let me grab the LP version of, uh, Medical Renditions of Grinding Decomposition, where we have grinding opus of forensic medical problems. See, like, there's a little difference there. But it's enough that it's like, whoa, like, that's sick. But putrefactive and cadaverous odes about necroticism, holy shit. So good. Like, that's one of those releases every time I listen to it I'm just like yo 
But just real quickly, I will, like, hold on. I'm not going to take the LP out, but look familiar? Twins. Well, not really, but you get what I'm saying. Pharmacist, early pharmacist is more pathologist than carcass. And I'm sorry if that sounds confusing, but it's just the, like, oh my goodness. How can you not love pharmacists? And I feel the same way about so many bands, but like this right here. It's so good. And this is the pus yellow version. I know this is kind of hard to get. I, I was legit bummed about that. I was like, no, how did that happen? But, uh, no, I really appreciate Pharmacist, like, before I did guest vocals on uh, the last full length, which is pretty... This is the album we should have gotten between Symphonies and Necroticism. Or Necroticism and Heartwork. Like, it, it, it fits. And this is the latest Pharmacist full length, Flourishing Extremities on Unspoiled Mental Grounds. I do guest vocals, actually, on the final track, Nursery Aesthetics. They even let me write my own lyrics. I come in at 513 if you're interested. But that's not why I love Pharmacist. I was grateful when they hit me up to do guest vocals. But this is where I was introduced to Pharmacist. Forensic Pathology Jurisprudence. But I have the Extended Jurisdiction LP version. And again, the, I know that these are kind of, these are pretty expensive. This is the only one I don't have on cassette either. This and the Oozing Split are the only two I'm, and I think the Egor Split I'm missing. Because I have tons of Pharmacist Splits. But again, if you are a pathologist, or I should have worn my pathologist shirt, but it's so goddamn hot. And it's long sleeves, because I would show you that font right there is all over my pathologist t-shirt. But this is pharmacist, not pathologist. But still, if you can get your hands on this, do it. I, I can't recommend this EP enough. And again, just a great collage. Gotta love anatomy. And some, you know, like... Part of me wants to say, if you have never heard, like, gore grind before, one of the best starter slash, like, beginner pack gore albums is probably... Aborted Gormageddon. And you might say that's a death metal record. Not really. I know they call them... No, no, that's Lang Che. The Razor Grind. But early Aborted is definitely not shitty. Like, Gormageddon's their last good record. I'm sorry, but it is. But yeah, they are a great band to start. If you really want to get into this genre, I feel like it's just, you know, like, because not everything kicks ass. But also, you know, like, you might be like, wait, this stuff's a little too gnarly. And I, like, legitimately, I 100% understand if you think, like, alright, because I wasn't even going to grab it, but... We are going over a band that's just as close when it comes to extreme 
And that's Mexico's Disgorge. Forensic. Like, I gotta be quick with that. Yeah. This is bulldozing, hyper-blasting, over-the-goddamn-top, ridiculous gore grind. Like, holy... I don't even know where to begin with Disgorge Mexico. I didn't grab their first album, as good as it is, because... Forensic is way more just like enjoy. <laughs> Parasitic Records did this reissue. I grabbed the tape NLP because this is one of my favorite hyper blasting slabs of gore ever. And yes, very out of order. You have guest vocals by George Corpse Grinder Fisher because uh, I think Cannibal did a tour in Mexico. And uh, yeah, like George has guest vocals on here. I forget what track off the top of my head. But Disgorge Mexico is probably one of the most extreme bands on the planet. Like speed, the aesthetic. If you've ever seen pictures or Disgorge Live, you know they wear like the bullet belts, the giant arm gauntlets. It's awesome. Like very early exhumed. Like it's kind of tongue in cheek, but not really. Like exhumed was total tongue in cheek with the gauntlets and all that. But Disgorge, oh my. Like I get that, you know. But see, this always got me stoked. Like, just the fact, Gore Metal Army. Like, I was just like, you know, that's fucking cool sounding. And then just, you know, exhumed Gore Metal. Matt Harvey, like, claimed, he's like, I hate that. I, hate, I hated how it sounded. So when we re-recorded it, stop. There was no reason to re-record it. Now, don't get me wrong, it sounds great with raw sewage, like, on the vocals and stuff again. But, like, also, I think the re-recording is all raw sewage. I forget, but, like, I think that's, like, the only, like, real, like, why did it re-record that record? I think that's, like, the one really, like, holy shit moment. But, like, with Chronic Corpora Infest, Hails to Corpse Crystal Records, like, very gnarly, gnarly stuff. And just a tiny bit more death metal than Forensic. That's the only reason... I went over Forensic first. Jesus Christ. Who is... Can't catch a break sometimes with that stuff. But, like, to me, Disgorge Mexico and this next band I'm going over really up the gore, the speed... And like I said, Discord Mexico kind of, I thought, pushed it to the limit. Hold on, let me close this window. Make it even more hot in here. But, has to be done, I'm sorry. I get it, they're doing their job. But, fuck. I put it in ABC order, though. Watch, I'm gonna knock everything. Okay, I didn't. Sick. Alright, so back to the subject at hand. So, where were we? Alright, pharmacist, awesome. Early carcass, pathologist worship. So good. So. Now, what is mints? Let's not get into that. 
okay? We're going to just, I'm going to pretty much show you what I think some of the gnarliest releases in my collection are in the next five minutes. Because there's a few bands here I need to go over. Because with Napalm Death, I forgot to go over something very important. But before I get there, we have to talk. Last Days of Humanity. Now, alright. The sounds of rancid juices sloshing around your coffin. Utterly classic and disgusting gore grind from 1998. Totally unmatched in grinding filth and unsettling chaos. Available for the first time on vinyl ever. So Hell's Headbangers release. Really filthy art. And really filthy tunes. But out of these 26 tracks, as good as this record is, it's a little bit more... It's still gore grind, do not get me wrong, but there's a lot more parts where it's like, that's some death metal, and that's heavy as shit. But, at the end of the day, it is a gore grind record. And the next release, holy shit, yes. It's a gore grind record, and I just, wow. Like, legit, wow. I didn't grab the live album, because I don't, I, I just... The live album is sick, but, like, I'm trying to go for importance here. So, Hymns of Indigestible Separation. What happened to your head? What's the matter with your face? Oh, my God! But the death is real. You are not going to get these colors anywhere else, except for maybe... Like some Pissgrave and some other albums where the death is real. Now, Pissgrave is not a gore grind band. They use a pitch shifter. There's hyper blasting. There's gore. They're just filthy fucking death metal in my opinion. Miasmasmic Necrosis. Gore grind. But still, there's parts where it's. Gnarly death metal with shifted vocals. And it's just awesome because it has that gore metal aesthetic. Because Exhumed, are they a gore grind band or a death metal band? Because if I'm going off of certain releases, they're death metal. If I'm going off other releases, especially the demos, it's gore grind. So some bands, you know change their sound up, and, you know, go a different direction. Last Days of Humanity have kept it just ridiculous since day one, and just keep on putting out insane <laughs> releases. And then there's also First Days of Humanity, if you want to go down that you know, rabbit hole. I should have grabbed some... Where are they? Oh, they're right underneath. Oh, hold on. Because they're it's, it's legit right in front of me. But I do want to read this hype sticker because it is important. But, uh... Ah, shit. Yeah, we have... Three First Days of Humanity tapes. We have Caves, Wounds Leaking, Cogulated Sludge, and Dissenter. Caves is sick. Like, legit, Caves is like the one I like go out of my way and listen to the most. But First Days of Humanity, like... You better know Last Days of Humanity before you go checking out First Days of Humanity. You get what I'm saying? I know I said that a couple times because, it's again, it's just one of those things I feel like, you know, don't start with a band like... I, don't get me wrong, this doesn't suck. But, like, Charred Remains of a Burn Victim, this is going to be a little bit too gnarly. 
And if you're like, oh, I'm tough, I can handle... No, 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 no. You don't under... This is more like gore noise. Where, you know, you might have not even vocals at times and tape bubbles that sound like guttural vocals. Now, I'm not sure if they do that. I'm just throwing out what noise... What gore noise, like, is. Like, Diarrhea Coffin is a very... Good, another, that's a good example of a way to get into a subgenre of gore, and it's not too over the top where some releases it's like, holy shit, like best deal putrefaction. And I, again, that's like one of my favorite records, it's always within arm reach, I should say, comps. But this is bestial gore. Now, what the hell is bestial gore? Well, imagine, you know, your usual... A horrifying 30-minute aural apocalypse of total bestial gore, war noise, barbarism, and inhumanity. For fans of revenge, regurgitate, carcass, impentago, tetragramicide, death worship, and piss grave. Gnarly. But, again, it's its own thing, but still, it's gore grind at the end of the day, so I throw this in the gore metal pile. Even though, technically, it's something else. Kind of, but not really. So, you just gotta keep that stuff in mind sometimes. And again, I know, this is gr it's gross, but it's extreme metal, so you should kind of, you know, know what you're in for here when it comes to gore grind. And then there's stuff like hard gore. What the hell's hard gore? I don't know, but that's what bone sickness claim to be, but also... This is one of the one of the best semi lost modern grind records in existence. Like 2017, Caligari did a reissue without the samples for I don't know I still don't know why they, they I don't care, but like having the LP and this is so fucked up like these all got like uh, recalled. But the band, legitimate, that's why I have this giant bone sickness flag right here. Uh, I think it was Mitch was like, yo, I'm, I know you love Theater of Morbidity. I'm so sorry about the record situation. Because I went through three of the, like, three of these. And it was just like, all these distros were like pulling their copies. And I'm like, fuck. What do I do? And then my friend was like, yo, I got my copy to work. And I was like, how? And yeah, he put it in like a dishwasher. I, I don't know how the hell he did it, but it's still warped. It's like, you know, like wobbly, wobbly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you still... Like, you get the sample, it, it, you could play through it, and that's way better than, like, when I when I first got it to work, you could barely even make it through. Shit would be skipping, it, it was kind of a, it was legit a bummer, because I still feel like this is one of the best, like I said, modern grind records that kind of is lost. But not really, because like I said, Caligari reissued it kind of recently. But when I saw the reissue, wasn't sold out. I was like, what the fuck? Like, seriously? But I want to talk about Sulfuric Cautery for a moment. Because they are one of my favorites when it comes to... Alright, do I have... Okay. So, like, mincing... Gr gore grinding madness is what sulfuric cautery play. I did not grab the first full length, my bad. But this is a split with uh, 
Suppression, who you should also definitely check out. But this split is great. Blast Addict Records is a little label you really should know about. They always put out the filthiest shit, along with Chaotic Noise Productions. Uh, 625 Thrash is always killing it. Like, I forgot to grab... Uh, see, like, we could be here all day. So, let me get to the real important shit real fast. But, another one of my personal favorite modern gore releases that just, to me, is, like, the bee's knees. I should have grabbed my Miasmasmic Necrosis tape. But, real quickly... My number one favorite grind record ever just influenced so many, and that's Repulsion, Horrified. I know, Slaughter of the Innocent and all that, but like, this is still just one of the best grindcore records of all time, and probably one of the most jocked records ever, because for all you Mortician fans out there, you ever notice why Will's bass sounds so goddamn sick? It's because Repulsion, same thing with Napalm Death. They were pretty much taking, like, Japanese hardcore Siege from, like, the Boston area and Repulsion and putting it all together, and there you go. But Horrified is just, to me, again, not gore grind, but just one of the best grindcore records of all time. And if you don't like this, uh, it's one of those things where, again, it's just your opinion, but... If you don't like Repulsion Horrified, I have to question if you even like Grindcore. Because, like, come on. Helga's head? Fuck! Like, just everything about that. Like, and almost every song is a band name. From Acid Bath, Decomposed, uh, Crematorium, Six Feet Under... Black Breath, Pestilent Decay, it's just so goddamn essential, like, this whole video should have been about Repulsion versus Carcass, who's more influential. I'm sure most people would say Carcass, because I bet... Some of you, sadly, have not ever sat down and listened to Repulsion Horrified. It's from 1986, what the... You're fucking up. For real, you are fucking up. Only thing from 1986 I listen to is Slayer. Okay, sick guy. But speaking of Carcass, again... Go back to 1988 when this was recorded, but wasn't dropped until 1999. And yes, that's a carcass god flesh split. Again, showing earache really, you know, kind of expected the listeners to have an open mind. Because you they're two totally different sounding bands. I love them both. I'm a huge Godflesh mark. Hails Justin Broderick. But, like, this is, like I said, some of my favorite Carcass material. It's live. It, it's just insane. Like, especially, like, the live version of Cadabric Incubator of Endoparasites. Like, it's just awesome. And the Godflesh side is... Just as gnarly. But, uh, Rico Putrefaction's on here. Photocide, Exhumed to Consume, Fermenting Inards. It's one of those things where it's like, why wouldn't you just make, like, a set out of this? 
Like, start here, and then, you know, like, see what songs you want to, like, play. Because, like, Cryptating Bow Erosion is 5 minutes and 28 seconds, Slash Dementia's 3 minutes and 23 seconds, Cadaveric Incubator of Endoparasites, 3 minutes and 12 seconds, Recaputrefaction, 409, Exhumed to Consume, 350, Fermenting Innards, 235, Photocide, 246, and End Pathological Necroticism, 5 minutes and 45 seconds. Hey, come on. They could throw that into the set and make it sick as fuck. Not one of those stupid melodies where there's not even vocals. It's just the riffs and stuff. Like, that's cool. It's better than nothing, but, like, come on. Like, just, you know, if you're going to do it, do it. Like, if you're going to play, like, you know, the, those songs, fucking play them. Don't just... Let your fans down. So, there's a couple more real quick. Like, I feel, you know, there's bands like modern bands. I'm just going to throw out some recommendations. Like, the new Septic Fumes promo is amazing. This is the 2023 promo. This is the DIY version. This is the Extremely Rotten version. Like, Joshy e. Rotten really nailed it here with just everything he wanted sonically. Because he's a friend of mine and we talk music. And I even told him, I was like, dude, I'm proud of you, man. Like, Extremely Rotten Productions put out your fucking promo. And if you like Septic Fumes, you like Grotesque Confection. And if you're like, but I've never heard Grotesque Infection, just trust me. If you like Septic Fumes, you're going to, there's a high, very high chance you're going to love Grotesque Infection. Similar vibes and stuff. And then, like, this is more Death Grind, but Torso Freak. I mean, come on, Postmortem, I just have to... Like, this is some of the, this is one of the best, now, I know it was recorded in 2017, but one of the best releases of the fucking year. Then we have the first Blue Holocaust record. I was going to grab, uh, oh, where is it? I saw it a second ago. Uh, Flesh, uh, I always forget if it's Flesh Of or For. Oh my goodness, I'm a fucking idiot. Flesh for the Cannibal God. I was going to show that off, but that's more like Impentago. And I forgot to grab some in my Impentago tapes. So we're going to just use Blue Holocaust debut full length. Twitch of the Death Nerve to also cover Impentago as the cover art is kind of on the money. And, I mean, a lot of the songs here, Raw Drum Machine, Giallo Gore Grind Classic, out now on Gateful Vinyl LP, brought to you by Bringer of Gore Records. Now, what does that mean? Well, Giallo is a form of Italian cinema. It's not just straight up, like, you know, like zombie exploitation. It's more like a murder mystery. A good example is uh, Suspiria. Like that would be a, you know, beginner. And again, I hate that term, but if you've never seen a Giallo film, yeah, like I, I would start with something like like that. It's a it's a little bit easier to get into. But, like, you have, you know, the samples and stuff, which might be like, how come you haven't brought up Mortician? Because Mortician is Mortician. And do we really need to talk about Mortician? But you might be saying the same thing about half of these bands. Do you really need to talk about the new Septage? Well, yeah, because this right here is... Some of the best carcass worship I've heard in 
a long time. Yet it's also septage. I am in love with this release right here. Like legit, it, it's so good in every single way. Cosmetically, sonically. Woo! Septic worship, intolerant, spree of infesting forms. So goddamn good. Leave it to me to teach my men how to die. Essential modern gore grind. And again, I know I've said, oh, they're one of my favorite modern gore grind bands, because there's a few. Because I put Septage up there with Light Cadaveric Incubator, who I didn't go over. Pharmacist. Etc. And again, real quickly before we end the video, a lot of these bands you will find on Gnarly Split. There's also Morgue Breath, which are just one of the best in the game right now. Again, we could just go here all day. And like when it comes to more death grind, Hemorrhoid. Especially Raw Materials of Decay, 100% has you covered. And there's just a couple more, and we'll call it a day. I'm sorry. But I went over Sulfuric Cautery. Like, there's char, there's char Cuttery from Philly. Like, I didn't go over fluids because, again, it's the same reason I didn't go over mortician. I kind of feel like, you know, and you pro again, you're probably saying the same thing of repulsion and carcass. We all know them. But this is another, like, if you're getting into this genre, I really feel like you got to check out Gruesome Stuff Relish. You just have to. And this split with Ophel. Holy shit! Haunted Hotel did the LP. Head Split did the tape. Essential shit right here on Unburied Repugnance. Because, again, this is one of those bands. Uh, gruesome uh, stuff relish. It's like, holy shit, this rules. And same with Human Affluence. This is the promo. 2019. Just one of my personal favorite in the genre. But at the end of the day, here's what it boils down to. Now, if I had Recaputrefaction, that would probably be right here. But not Gore Grind. Gore Grind. Because this is more horror-based lyrically. This is grindcore. This is medically... Driven fucking gore grind. That's pretty much it. Like, there's way more in common with Repulsion's Horrified... than with Terrorizer World Downfall than there is with the Diarrhea Coffin 40-track demo. You get what I'm saying? Hopefully you do, because listen to Carcass and stop where you want to stop. But I suggest, no matter what, listen to Symphonies of Sickness. Because it's just one of those records that, to me, gets better with time. And when it comes to, like I said, like modern stuff, definitely check out like Sulfuric Cautery, Septage, Pharmacist, uh, Jesus Christ, I mean, we could be here all day, because, yeah, I'm just going to shut up and let you folks check out some of the stuff on your own, but like when it comes to straightforward grindcore, 
My personal favorite record, Repulsion Horrified. Four straight up grind core. But for gore grind, I'm probably going to have to go with the safe answer here and Symphonies of Sickness. Don't get me wrong. Like, again, there's plenty of deep dives I could go into here. I just wanted to make this kind of here's some sick releases, enjoy. So that's pretty much what this is. So, gore, what is it good for? Awesome tunes. Check out Symphonies of Sickness by Carcass. We were blasting posthumous regurgitation. And I forget where I put... <laughs> There's also another band you, you just need to check out if you're watching this. If you've never heard a schismic necrosis, get into it. It's another sick one. Nauseating stew of rancid decomposition. There's so much good stuff like when it comes to the genre. Like I, Again, I could be here all day. But, I, oh, I put the posthumous tape back. I'm sorry. Let me just read the title because I forget which one it is. Posthumous Regurgitation, Exhumation of Cadavers for Research and Consumption. Hell yeah. Thanks again for watching. I hope you, you know, learned something maybe or heard some bands you never heard of before that you can go check out. Thanks for watching as always, you fucking rule. Infernal hails and gratitude. Peace. Yeah.